Pinterest-TV.com. What are you looking at? We're at the Wine Rendezvous Grand Tasting and Chef Showcase. We got our special gear. We got the glass with the special plate. Man, this is going to be hot. Come with me. Let's do this. Wines from all over the world. I have Steve here who's going to share with me a little bit of Napa, a little bit of Sonoma, Sonoma Valley wines, uh, and so that I can find my taste. Because wine is really about what you like, not necessarily what everyone else likes or thinks is great. Steve. Yeah, and I sell wine for a living, and so you said it correctly. It's what you like to drink. So it really doesn't matter what the experts say is the best wine or whatever. If you don't like it, put it down. We have hundreds of wines here. You're going to find something that you like. What I'd like to do is let's try a little Sonoma. Okay. This happens to be Clos de Bois Sonoma Reserve Cabernet. And Sonoma, I think you're going to find it's going to be a little bit softer. Okay. And this actually happens to be a 2008 vintage. And so then we're going to try a Napa that's actually a 2009 vintage. So that year difference can make a lot of difference in how soft the wine will feel to you yes. and how the fruit feels. So we're going to go from kind of what I would call a softer wine, mm -hmm. and then we're going to try something that's going to have a little bit harder tannin. Okay. So tannin would be like uh, like if you had iced tea that was too rich. Yes. That would be that sensation, okay. kind of okay. a drying sensation. Right. And that usually comes from oak. Okay. So. Let me try this. Would you... All right. So what do you think? Mmm. I can taste, I can taste sort of that uh, full body, but it's light. It doesn't stick with me as long. So now we have a 2009 Mount Veeder Cabernet uh -huh. from Napa Valley. Okay. Now this happens to be mountain fruit, so it's a higher elevation. So you really get this great fruit, but you're gonna get a little bit stronger tannin. Aftertaste. Well, one of the reasons is up in the mountains, real small berries, and so they have thicker skins. Yes. So when you macerate to make your wine, mm -hmm. a lot of that tannin comes from the skins as well as the oak barrels that we use. That gives you that, that extra aftertaste. Yeah. Basically what I would say is the first wine would cost $20, this wine costs $40. Uh -huh. The first wine you would drink within the next 8 to 10 years, this you might drink 12 to 15 years from now. Wow. And it would still okay. be drinking well. And still so, be drinking well. Yeah, but give it a taste and see if you... You see what I'm talking about? Mm. I see, I see. It's a pretty dramatic difference. Major difference. In fact, the the first one I tried actually ended very smooth after you know, after I take taken a sip. And then the second one stayed with me longer. It had it had a strong feel to it. So it, you know, it's sort of like had a memory. We're with Sidanelia from the Fetzer Vineyard. I'm excited because I'm learning all that I can about wine today and, and we have the pros with us. So today here I have to show you okay. two of my wines, two of my babies. That's how I like These are your call. babies. These are my babies. Okay, Sanctuary. So, sanctuary. What you have there is our Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh -huh. For this line we have Cabernet Sauvignon, we have a Pinot Noir, that that's why we're pouring right now. Okay. But we also, in addition to those two, we have a Symphondel as well. Ooh. Okay, I'm excited. So let's talk about our sanctuary, okay. our special place. And yes. that's what we try to do. We try to look this for the special places where the grapes grow the best. Ah, I see. So in the case of our Cabernet Sauvignon, mm -hmm. we have our grapes coming from Rutherford Napa. Rutherford. Okay. Rutherford Napa. It's vineyard designate, and our vineyards are called Ucibelli. Ucibelli. I love this. I love yes, okay. it's all Italian influence yes. here, right? Beautiful wine, reserve wine. We aged this wine for about 18 to 20 months in barrels. Okay. So we taste all the time, and that's how we decide when we want to pull it off the barrels and bottle. Okay, so you 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 make the wine, but you put it in barrels. So you decide on how long it sits in the barrels before we release it to the public. Before I bottle, and then it stays in the bottle for some time. So as soon as we release, it's ready to be drank. Of course, it can be aged uh -huh. because it's being worked to be aged. Right. 
but as soon as we release it, you can drink it. Ah, excellent. Okay, yeah. so Sanctuary is what we're going to try first, right? Yes. Okay. So, we talk about the Cabernet. Right. But I'll prefer if you try the Pinot Noir first. Ah, Pinot Noir. Okay, let's do it. So, Sanctuary is the name of the... Vin Sanctuary is the name of the brand. The brand, okay. So, Pinot Noir, it's a very delicate variety. Mm. Very soft and subtle. It's a great wine for people who start going from white wines and they really want to try reds, but they don't want a sweet wine. In this case, it's a very soft wine. Uh -huh. It doesn't have too much tannins. It's very soft and it is. gentle. It's one of the hardest varieties to make as well. But the end result is delicious. It is very delicious. You know, I've tried several different wines. This is very good, and I think Pinot Noir may be along the lines of my favorite now. Awesome. Yeah, yes. I love Pinot Noir too. I love it. Okay, yeah. so should we try the more uh, mature? Let's Would that go be? to the more robust, robust wines. Okay, all right. One more sip of that. So now I'm going to pour the Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay, Cabernet Sauvignon. Yes. This is one of the varieties that actually is more plastic. Okay. It can be grown in many, many regions. That's why you have Cabernet Sauvignon in France. You have also in Argentina and Chile, here in California. Okay, okay. So our Cabernet Sauvignon, as I said earlier, it's from Rutherford, Napa. One of the regions that we think it grows our Cabernet the best. Ah, I see. This is very good as well. Yeah. That one is a bit, the Pinot Noir is, is more smooth. Yes. This one has a, a little more bite to it. Exactly, and that's how it's supposed to be. And that's why we have so many options in wines and also in food. Ah. So, you're eating a steak, you need something more robust, something that is gonna cleanse your palate, mm -hmm. you go for the cab. Ah, I see, I see. Then you're eating something that it's a little lighter. Right. But still, it's not just a salad. You have some protein going on, ah. some chicken, some okay. shrimps. You go with the Pinot Noir. I see, I see, see? We get an education here on the pairings between wine and food as well. This is awesome. Yeah. Zidanelia, thank you very much. You're very welcome. I'm with Jennifer now, and we are going to be looking at the organic wines. Um, Jennifer, tell us a little bit about organics versus the traditionals. Okay. It's really all about farming, and it's all about the environment. Everything that we do at Fetzer Vineyards is, is, has to do with sustainable agriculture and sustainable practices. So we recycle, whether it in, in the office or the vineyard, we recycle, we use water very sparingly, we buy all renewable energy, and we grow the grapes organic. Organically. So all the Bonterra grapes are grown with 100% organically grown grapes and everything that goes into them is organic. So what that means is the farming method. And how it started, it started with the Fetzer family. They started an organic garden way back in um, the, I think it was the mid 80s. And all the chefs from San Francisco would come up and buy this beautiful produce from the organic garden. And the winemakers, our winemaker Dennis Martin and a couple of our other winemakers got together and said, what would happen if we did organically grown grapes? Everything's so pure and beautiful. They were actually the first certified organic winery in California. So so we're trying the um, Bonterra Sauvignon Blanc. It's from Mendocino County. It's just a beautiful, it's a perfect summer white sipping wine in Texas. And I notice you keep it in ice, so you have to keep it chilled. Yes. It is, you know, for, um, I mean, white wines you want chilled anyway, but I think with Chardonnays you want them to open up a little bit more, so you chill them, but then you maybe take them out of the refrigerator or the ice 20 minutes ahead of time. And I'm gonna try this. But you said it, it's crisp, it's cool, and it's, and, I'm, and, it's, and it's organic. That's right, it's organic, I'm loving this. Um, I have so many favorites that I'm getting, and then I'm, we're still at Fetzer. This is awesome. <laughs> We're with two sommeliers from HEB, and they're gonna share with us a little bit about HEB's role in all of these events, because it seems like everywhere we go, HEB is on top of it, and, and, and a little bit about their wine selections today. Yeah, we, this, is, this is one of our largest events, obviously. Wine and Food Week, uh, we're a title sponsor. We've been a good partner for a few years with these guys. 
Um, of course, tonight we're doing the Grand Tasting, the big showcase, the Chef Rendezvous Grand Tasting. Uh, a lot of the best wines in town are here tonight. Uh, with our name on the door, we think we should have the best wine in the building, and I think we probably may have pulled it off. There's some really good wines here. We have a good representation here. We have Argentina, we have Spain, uh, Italy, France, California. In Texas, Cabernet is king. Uh, so we have, we have some really big Cabernet-based wines here, too. We love the one-on-one -on -one with the customers, finding out what they like personally, and, you know, tailoring something just for what they want for their lifestyle. Show me what you like best of what's right here, and let me try it. Can I challenge you? Challenge me. Best wine in the building. Whoa. I'm going to stand behind it. All right, this is the Ramian Chapter 8. You're going to see in the next couple months, Wine Enthusiast is going to give this wine 96 points. What which is a very, a very high rating on a 100 point scale. Most of the publications use a 100 point scale. 96 points is up there. There's not many wines rated higher than that. Chapter 8. Chapter 8. Wow. 235 cases made. With Wine and Food Week, we poured a case at the 80 Sips event last night. We poured a case at tonight's event. What's that? 233 cases left. Wow. 50 came to town. We've already sold 30. Okay. We poured two. I'm going to pull the truck up the, at the back, <laughs> and we're going to slide just two bottles. Can we get two bottles out the back? We'll see what we can do for sure. <laughs> All right, I love it, because this is good. I, I can see putting a steak on the grill, oh, yeah. you know, putting a steak on the grill, maybe do some mashed potatoes or something, That's right. and knock down some Chapter 8s. Right. Go find your favorite HEB store, check out the wine person in the wine department, ask him for the Chapter 8, they'll get it for you. Lenice, yes. it is your turn. Uh, my pick is the Shining Hill, Washington State. Good wine. Shining Hill, Washington Good wine. State. Yeah, this is a Cabernet blend I hate to that out. made by Col Solare. This okay. is their second label. Absolutely fantastic, great every day, very smooth, okay. very easy to drink on its own or with dinner. Let's just check it out. Shining Hill, after the Chapter 8, Really? Okay. The truck is going to need more than one. Yeah. Okay, we're going to pull the other truck up in the back again and get a case of Shining Hill. Shining Hill. Totally this different style. Good. Different style has a different it has a different a different taste. Yeah. But you know, you can almost say a different food would go with it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Like a big red right? with that. Yes, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. H E B is really stepping up their whole grocer image. It's out of control. Um, they, you know, they have the gourmet, the, the sommeliers here. They have the, the gourmet chefs. Really, a grocer is doing it in Houston. We decided to stop some folks to share with us your experience. We started at 4.30 at the Capital One vault upstairs with some more expensive type wines, and then we meander it down here about 6.30. And we have probably tasted, I don't know, 10 to 20 different wonderful delights. And I couldn't even tell you how many different types of wine we've tried. And um, even had to quit break, get a little bit of water, recuperate, and now we're on our second wind and ready to take off for the second half of the nice. evening. Nice. Now you're from the Woodlands, we all we're, we're all from the Woodlands, and we have been here every single year for the past seven years I've had this event. We have not missed one. Well, this is my first, so what do you recommend I do next? Well, um, it starts out on Thursday night, so I recommend that you be here on Thursday night next year, and it's a Thursday, Friday, and this is the finale of, of the event. Mm -hmm. I love it. Where else can you get a culinary experience like this? You won't you won't experience the full essence of this unless you check out that bread pudding in the back. Okay. It's to die for, man. Okay. So I love it. Um, opportunities to have wine and good food with good friends. Can't beat it, man. Right. All the way around. Awesome. And this is a good family time too, right? Definitely, Adult definitely. Family time. Tell me about it. Well, we get to get get together and kind of mingle, you know, and have fun. We have the good friends, of course, good wines, and always have a good time. Every year it gets better and better. We're with Deborah now from Precept Wineries, and she's going to share a little bit about what she's got with us today. Deborah, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good, good. So first up, we'll just run you through a couple of our wines. We have three here tonight. Uh, we'll start with the Willowcrest Riesling. If you want to taste it, yeah, absolutely. This is your 
This is my taster. This is your taster. The, the Willow Crest. Willow Crest, so there's the label. So it's the 2010 Willow Crest Riesling. Mm, I like that. It's very fresh, crisp, not overly sweet. Uh, it's, so it's just a very easy, good, you know, summertime wine for down here in Houston, for sure. So it's cool. It's a good full-time wine, patio, what we like to call the patio pounder. So Patio pounder. I love that's it. What we, that's, that's what I we call it. it. Uh, then we can taste the uh, Waterbrook Chardonnay if you would like. Uh, absolutely. As you know, I don't like to pour my wine out, if you've seen so far. So let me just... No, there's no reason for you to do that. There's too exactly. many great wines to sip and enjoy. Exactly. So next up is the Waterbrook Chardonnay. So this is our 2009 vintage. Um, Waterbrook is about seven miles outside of Walla Walla. And we just built a beautiful facility right outside of uh, Walla Walla where we make all of our wines uh, for Waterbrook. And you're taste, tasting the Chardonnay right now. So. The Chardonnay, it isn't as fruity and sweet. So you're not going to get, um, on Washington wines, you're not going to get the big oak and buttery. You're going to get a little bit of those characteristics, but it's really about tropical fruit. Uh, apple, crisp apples is really what you get. This definitely is an easy to drink Chardonnay. And I'm drinking it very easily. Or am I talking to you? Uh, uh, we've done enough talking now, now it's time to do some tasting. I'm going to go around and catch as many of these booths before they close, and I want you guys to join me. We'll talk about it after we're done, all right? Good enough. We got Clifton and Constance here, the heart and soul of Wine Week in the Woodlands. Guys, just tell me about how it all went down this week. I oh, mean, it, it was awesome. It was awesome. Started with a little rain on Thursday night. Yeah. That cooled it off and made it one of the nicer events in years because the weather was actually was good awesome. once the rain yeah. passed. It was right. awesome. Lovely. People had a blast. Uh-huh. Constance. Yep. And then we did Ladies of the Vine Luncheon at the club at Carlton Woods, and that was always a sellout. It was a great favorite with a, lots of lovely ladies drinking wine and having lunch. Well, I have to come to that one next year. Yeah, there's a couple of guys in there. <laughs> she won't let me in. Yeah. <laughs> really? Well, you know, you're a good-looking guy. You're a good-looking guy. <laughs> That's right. I gotta protect the sheriff. <laughs> so we have wines from all over the world. We do. HEB showed up in full force. Absolutely. And then Capital One, of course, backs you up as yep. well. You raised funds this time? Absolutely. Absolutely. For Swing for a Cure was a benefactor for the silent auction here at the Capital One Bank Grand Tasting. And then the John Cooper School Signature Series. <laughs> for literacy efforts in Montgomery County was the benefactor for the HEB Wine Walk at Market Street. So it feels good to help people. Yes, yes, that's what it's about. Doing yeah, good. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me about the wines. Tell me about how they had, how you got to coordinate all of these. I mean, were there 400 wines here or something like that? About 500. About 500 yeah, it's closer wines. to 500 wines, you know, and we have wines from Chi. Everywhere, I think, you know, from Israel, from Argentina, Chile, of course, California, yes. Texas, of course. We had some great Texas wines tonight. I tasted some great Washington State. Yes, yes. Yep. Oregon, Washington Oregon. State. Chile. Spain, France. France. We had them all. You know, something from everywhere. Uh, something to fit any anybody's taste. Right, you know? and it looks like Cadillac did a great oh. <laughs> VIP room there. Yes, and a uh, coffee and chocolate bar. Yeah. Tell me about that. Oh, uh, yeah. Arias and Artisan handmade chocolates with a coffee bar next to it. Nice little poshy sitting area. Some nice live music, kind of like a speakeasy lounge. Okay. Some nice well, ports. So, next year, when all of our fans come down, buying tickets to come to this. Yes, indeed. 
you know, what do we do? You can go online? Online. Wineandfoodweek.com is the easiest way to do it. But we do a lot of other events throughout the year, too, that are a lot of fun. And that you can find those at foodandvinetime.com, where we have all the events listed. But this one is wineandfoodweek.com. We're here with Victor Mills, the founder of Swing for a Cure, which is the uh, primary benefactor of the wine portion and auction of this amazing event. Um, Victor, tell me a little bit about Swing for a Cure and, and what it's about. I'm happy to. Uh, about 14 years ago, we got out of the hospital with our daughter, uh, who at the time was 10 months old and she unfortunately had to have heart surgery. My wife and I had never experienced anything like that before. She was our first child. Both of us had been healthy through our entire lives and uh, through just the amazing work that we saw the doctors and nurses do at Texas Children's and then you know, frankly seeing dozens and, and hundreds of other families go through similar things that we were going through. We had one of those moments where we said, you know, we got down on our knees and said if and when we'd ever get out of here, we'd see what we could do to maybe raise some money. So for the past 14 years now, we've had a golf tournament and charity dinner uh, that has raised nearly a million dollars towards pediatric and uh, pediatric cancer and pediatric heart disease research. They're the two largest disease killers of children in the United States, and we just sit, so, tried to see what we could do as uh, for our part to try and get rid of those two pretty nasty diseases. You're doing your part, and yeah. it is greatly appreciated. And I'm sure the um, the event chairs, you know, are excited about helping swing for a cure. Well, we uh, love we love that uh, Constance and Clifton at Wine and Food Week have asked us to be part of this, and uh, we're just trying to do our part to help them run a fantastic event. Awesome. Hey guys, it doesn't hurt to do good while doing good. All right, um, I think it was John F. Kennedy said it's okay to do good while doing good. And these guys have contributed a lot of time, energy, and of course, the finest of wines from around the world for a good cause. And I'm excited that I got to meet Mr. Mills. And guys, the happy hour is just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm caught up today. I'm caught up today, I'm really enjoying myself, and, and, and not only is it about alcohol and uh, you know, great food, but it's really, there's a, there's, a, there's a method behind the madness, and it's always good to be a part of that, and you should too. Find a charity, find uh, an organization that could use your help. It doesn't have to be about money, it can also just be about time. This is the happy hour, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.